Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Spotify of China, Tencent Music. If you're familiar with them, calling them the Spotify in China might actually not be fair. They're sort of an all-in-one music and live entertainment service with offerings that go above and beyond that of Spotify. It took me a minute to start to grasp their offerings, but they essentially generate revenue through two main revenue streams. The first is what most would be familiar with, and it's through a subscription service to access music that they've licensed on their platform. Very similar to that of Apple Music and Spotify, a standard monthly fee for access to downloads and ad-free music streaming. The second way they generate revenue is through their social entertainment platforms. The services offered through this channel are live karaoke and live music performances. Users will tip the performers with virtual gifts and the revenue generated will be shared between the performer and Tencent Music. I don't think I've really seen an app like this in the US other than kind of maybe Twitch, but it sounds like the Tencent Music platforms are optimized and developed for mobile first as opposed to desktop like Twitch. To my surprise, the social and live entertainment revenue is almost twice as large as the music subscription service. I'll first jump over to the DCF and then we will circle back on some risks. I've gone ahead and pulled together two DCFs, a base case and a bull case. In our base case, we continue with the trends we saw in 2021 revenue. We will have music revenue still growing, but at a slower pace compared to prior years as we saw a large drop off from 2020 and 2021. For the social entertainment revenue, we have it continuing to drop off around 1% annually, which is what we saw in 2021. They've mentioned in their annual filings, this revenue has had an uptick in competition. They don't go on to say exactly what is taking away from it, but TikTok is the first thing that came to my mind. Over the last few years, we have really seen TikTok kind of take over the social entertainment space. And I wouldn't be surprised if there is significant pressure and overlap between these two platforms. If we move on to COGS, we have it continuing to ever so slightly increase as the music revenue that is growing has substantially higher costs than the social entertainment. So due to this and the licensing costs, we've increased COGS. We've held all other costs flat to 2021 levels. And based on these assumptions, we get a valuation range between 13 to 13.3 billion RMB, which is about two to 2.1 billion USD, a quarter of their current market cap around 8.5 billion. I was a bit discouraged at first when I looked at these numbers, as what I've seen recently is actually significant undervaluations of Chinese firms. So I decided to pull together a much more optimistic bull case that factors in stronger growth and improving margins to reflect the fact that this is a growth company that is relatively small, and maybe 2021 is just a down year. In the bull scenario, we have growth that is going to be on pace with historical averages for the music streaming business. And we took a middle ground from the historical growth for the social and entertainment business. I've also layered in improvements to margins to reflect efficiencies when scaling. In this scenario, we get a valuation, a valuation range between 64 to 67 billion RMB, which is about 10 to 10 and a half billion USD. This would imply they're trading at a slight discount currently. I really want to like the bull case, but I'm not convinced 100% that China will fully adopt policies of paying for music. Historically, copyrighted material has basically been non-existent, so the transition to charging for music is still a relatively new concept throughout China. The sharp decline in 2021 for the social and live entertainment space also has me worried as I fundamentally don't know enough about the sector and competitors, and I'm struggling to find a lot of good information online. I've seen how TikTok has taken over social media in the US and would guess a similar trend is happening in China. Now, just a quick note, the Chinese app for TikTok actually goes under a different name, but the parent company ByteDance does have a Chinese based app as well. I believe it goes by the, the name Duo Yin. Based off this, I'd lean towards Tencent Music maybe being fairly valued, currently if not slightly undervalued, I'd wager the true performance will probably land somewhere between what I have in my two scenarios, but I wanna see how 2022 plays out and do more research on competitors for the social and live entertainment segment. Now, quickly moving on to risks, which I think are both real and material for Tencent Music. The first one is Tencent Entertainment owns 90% of the company and controls 95% of the outstanding vote. Just about every bylaw is favorable to Tencent Entertainment and not Tencent Music. They can sell the company for any price to anyone without any input from shareholders. They can change the board of directors, they can change the executives. Basically, you're investing in Tencent Entertainment's desire to run a music streaming business. As long as this stays as a priority and focus area for Tencent Entertainment, 
There aren't or shouldn't be any issues, but if they change their strategy at all and music falls out, you could see the company sold to another firm with no say whatsoever. Now, we see this in the US all the time, Snapchat, Meta, Google, they're all controlled by founders from a voting percentage standpoint. However, in the US, there is recourse if they wanna perform actions that didn't serve the best interest of all shareholders. In China, I would argue we don't have those same protections. The second thing that stood out to me was they actually only have licenses to roughly 85% of their music catalog. It's a bit of a legal gray area and it sounds like they work to get more licenses, but even without the licenses, they will still provide the music. If China continues to enforce and strengthen copyright protections, there could be some substantial lawsuits down the road that they may face for unlicensed music. We saw early on that Spotify had a lot of issues with copyrights for their material, so it's not too far off to think it could happen. The last thing to quickly hit on is the VIE structure. I have a video discussing on VIEs and what they are, but there's always risks associated with these. You're not buying the underlying equity in the actual company, you're buying shares in a Cayman Island company. With all that, you know, I do think I have, a, I have adjusted for this risk with the 17% whack, but even with that, there's still substantial operating risk in Tencent Music that I haven't come across before in other companies. I think it's something that would definitely take a little bit more due diligence to feel comfortable with, and maybe even increasing that discount rate. However, the last thing to note though on the positive side is they have signed large agreements and partnerships with important players in the industry. They have agreements with Apple Music, Spotify, Universal Music, and a few others. They're doing the right things, and it appears like the rest of the industry outside of China has kind of determined that Tencent Music will be the platform to deliver content to individuals in China. So I think there is a strong case there that maybe the risks I'm highlighting are a little bit over overweighted, but I think more research would be need would need to be done to confirm that. But as always, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe.